So here we are asked to verify the left distributive property of matrix multiplication. Now, to begin, we are going to let matrix A be an M by N matrix, and we're going to let matrix B and matrix C be size appropriate matrices. And our job is to show or prove the left hand distributive law. So here we go. I don't want to think about this in two different ways. So to begin, let's just think about what's given. We want to let A be in M by N matrix. And we're letting matrix B and matrix C be size appropriate. So I'm going to give us specific values to these size appropriate matrices. Let's suppose that they are N by P matrices. So both of these matrices, B and C, are the same size. So we can make a little love note to ourselves that since matrix B and matrix C have the same size, then we know by definition that matrix B plus matrix C exists. Woohoo! Now we can also observe here that since matrix A is M by N and matrix B plus matrix C is N by P, we're observing that the number of columns of the first matrix is equal to the number of rows of our second matrix. So therefore, matrix multiplication exists. So we could know that matrix A multiplied by matrix B plus C exists. Beautiful. Now, what I want to do is think about the ith jth entry of this new matrix. So after we consider the vector operation, we'll go ahead and use summation notation to verify this alternatively. So we want to consider the ith jth entry of matrix A times the sum of matrix B plus matrix C. And let's give ourselves plenty of room. So what are we being asked to do here? Well, we want to multiply the ith row of matrix A by the jth column of the sum of matrix B and C. So here we go. We have the ith row of matrix A multiplied by the jth column of the sum of these two matrices. We have the jth column of matrix B plus the jth column of matrix C. So Another way to think about this is to convert them to their vector form. So we have the column vector. So we have the entry in the ith row, first column of A. We have the entry in the ith row, second column of A. And we continue all the way to that last column or that last term. So that's the ith row, nth column. And now we want to multiply this by the jth column of matrix B plus C. So we have the entry in the first row jth column of matrix B plus the entry in the first row jth column of matrix C. We have the entry in the second row jth column of matrix B plus the entry in the second row jth column of matrix C. And we continue this all the way until that very last term or the very last entry. So this is going to be the entry in the nth row jth column of matrix B plus the entry in the nth row jth column of matrix C. Now, by properties of vectors, we can distribute the column vector of A, that ith column vector of A, through to both column vectors of B plus C. So we're going to need a little bit more room than this. So we can rewrite this as the ith row of matrix A multiplied by the jth column of matrix B. So we have the entry in the first row, jth column, the entry in the second row, jth column, all the way to the entry in the nth row, jth column. Plus, again, we have the ith row of matrix A multiplied by 
the jth column of matrix C. So you have the entry in the first row, jth column, the entry in the second row, jth column, all the way to that very last term, the entry in the nth row, jth column. Well, we can also rewrite this in its vector form. So we can say that this is the ith row of matrix A multiplied by the jth column of matrix B plus we have the ith row of matrix A plus the jth column of matrix C. So in other words, what we have shown is that the ith jth entry of matrix A multiplied by the sum of matrix B plus matrix C is equal to the ith jth entry of the product of matrix A and matrix B plus the product of matrix A and matrix C. And we can conclude that since this is arbitrary, it holds true for all columns and all rows. So since this is arbitrary, it holds true for all rows of matrix A and all columns of matrix B plus C. Woohoo! And we're ready for the big finale. We can write our final conclusion. So we can say that, therefore, the left-hand distributive law holds true that matrix A multiplied by the sum of matrix B plus matrix C is equal to the product of matrix A times matrix B plus the product of matrix A times matrix C. End proof. Now, now that we have shown this in the full row and column vector form, we can alternatively verify this using sigma notation or using your summation notation. So alternatively, we can verify this as follows. So if we again consider that ith jth entry of matrix A multiplied by the sum of matrix B and matrix C, in sigma notation, we would say that this is the sum from k is one to n. And then we have the entry in the ith row, kth column of matrix A, multiplied by the entry in the kth row, jth column of matrix B, plus the entry in the kth row, jth column of matrix C. Now this, of course, by algebra, is equivalent to saying that we have the sum from k is 1 to n of the entry in the ith row, kth column of matrix A, multiplied by the entry in the kth row, jth column of matrix B, plus the entry in the ith row, kth column of matrix A, multiplied by the entry in the kth row, jth column of matrix C, which is equivalent to saying the sum from k is 1 to n of the entry in the ith row, kth column of matrix A, multiplied by the entry in the kth row, jth column of matrix B, plus the sum from k equals 1 to n of the entry in the ith row, kth column of matrix A, multiplied by the entry in the kth row, jth column of matrix C. And again, what we have shown here is that the ith jth entry of matrix A multiplied by the matrix B plus C is equal to the ith jth entry of the product of matrix A times matrix B plus the product of matrix A times matrix C. Woohoo! So we again attain the same conclusion that since this is arbitrary, it holds true for all rows of matrix A and all columns of matrix B plus C. Therefore, confirming that the left distributive law of matrix multiplication is true.